This is Joseph Coco. I'm at MTAC 2017 on behalf of Becca Holborn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Becca. Hi, guys. I'm Becca Hilburn, creator of Natto Soup Studio Art and Process Blog, as well as the YouTube channel that you are currently watching this video on. And you guys hear me yammer at you all the time, but you don't get to see my setup. So I thought I would take the opportunity to engage in an interview and show you guys my table. Okay, and what's bringing you to MTAC this year? Well, I am a Nashville local. I live right off of West End, so MTAC is a natural choice for me. It is the Middle Tennessee Anime Convention here in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. And we're here in the Sheraton, and this is MTAC 17. The theme is Haiku, which is a very cute theme. So I have some lovely cherry blossoms around the table. And I am here to hang out with the wonderful audience at MTAC to sell them commissions, to sell them comics, to sell them charms and other cute things. Okay, and what do you have that's new? I know we talked to you about a couple years ago yeah, at ALA. ALA, right? Um, I have lots of things that are new. What is not shown on the table are all of my mini comics are new, but um, I had them out yesterday and earlier today, and they're not moving quite as well as some of my other products, so I decided to go ahead and pull them. But new would be, I have a new to you commission sample book with loads of very cute commission samples. And I encourage any artist who's interested in doing commissions at conventions to put together a sample book like this. It really doesn't have to be difficult. You can just pick up an inexpensive little portfolio down at Dick Blick or Jerry Sardarana and fill it with examples of your work that you can reasonably fill at conventions or directly after conventions. So as you can see, I have a variety of media in this book. And uh, my most popular seller at most conventions happens to be my pencil sketches, but also very, very popular are my mini watercolors, and as you can see, they're very cute. Uh, these are a very popular portrait option for families and for couples. Also new are many of my wooden charms here on the pie plate. Well, before we go to the wooden charms, can sure. you tell me, uh, is the audience... Um, do you have trouble explaining to them which commissions you can fill at the con versus which ones uh, you have to take home to complete? Um, if, if I am fresh to the con and my brain is rolling along on all cylinders and it's not super loud, I have no problem at all. But as the noise increases and as I get tired and fatigued from the show, it does get more difficult. But I think the problem is more me than necessarily them or even necessarily the commission book. Do you think it would make more sense to have two commission books? One for at con commissions and one for at home You know commissions? that is something definitely worth thinking about and I am always exploring new options. In fact, I have a small tablet that actually, this is the small tablet. I have a small tablet that I used to have commission examples on and those are the more detailed, more expensive commission examples. But unfortunately, that gallery has been wiped, but we never really used it anyway. We just forgot it. we had that tablet. So, um, you know, I would be interested in having two commission books, but as you can see, space on my table is at a premium, and I have a variety of sample and example books already out. So I don't know that I could afford to give up that space. Okay. And you find that um, commissions are a good thing to take up small bits of table space to get... Uh, to get a lot of sales? Commissions are my bread and butter. Um, you can see around my booth, I do have some fan art, but I am by no means a fan art artist. I don't do a lot of fan art. I only do things that I enjoy or things that my customers are commissioning. And my print book, while it does have some fan art, is mainly original art. My big focus is I really want people to be able to afford original art. I really want people to think of original art as accessible. I really want them to consider commissions as an option and an alternative to portraits. I mean like photo portraits. So while um, the, for me commissions are not just a little thing that takes up space on the table. Commissions are an integral part of my business plan and as you guys know I'm very passionate about art. I'm very passionate about making art accessible to people by doing tutorials, by talking to people, by running how to be a con artist, by doing panels, by doing workshops. So commissions are sort of a form of outreach that allows me to make a little bit of money back. Okay. And is that something you would recommend to a, a new artist no, or just someone who's not necessarily. been established? Not necessarily. Right. A lot of people think commissions are going to be easy because they can draw at home and they enjoy drawing at home. But when you're doing commissions at 
the show, it can actually be very difficult. You have to be a little bit of a showman. You have to be willing to put yourself on display, put your art on display. You have to be very comfortable drawing in front of people because that is a huge part, at least for me, of how I do commissions. If you enjoy those things, though, commissions can be great. Commissions are exhausting and uh, they're very time consuming and I don't get to engage with my audience quite as much as I would like to because I'm so busy, you know, with my head down drawing, trying to fill commissions. So um, if you have to table by yourself, it really helps to have an assistant or rethink how you offer commissions. Okay, and you were trying to tell me about your wooden charms. I sure was. So new to this year are the succulent, the mermaid, the clovers with a lucky clover, the cherry blossoms, the strawberry and strawberry flowers, this particular dino, coffee mermaid, who is me in spirit, the bobcat, um, and I think that my, oh, I have a, Some of the a cyclops, yeah. a witch girl, and I think I may have sold my succulents, but I have two succulent charms as well. And the ones we're looking at right now are hand painted and sealed. Um, and that is also a new thing for the show. And I do offer custom ones, so if people want a particular color, they can commission one and I'll fill it the, when I go home at night. Okay, and um, obviously all of your watercolors are new. Um, yes. I know you've been doing a lot more watercolors since uh, 2015. What got you started on that? Obviously painting... Doing more? Uh, obviously painting 7-inch Kara has been something you've been doing for quite some time, but in terms of uh, producing original pieces sure. outside of right. uh, your comic. Okay, so I'm about to get real with you guys. I get a lot of shade for my art style. A lot of people think that what I do is easy, and they think that I am a crummy artist because that's what I do. And they don't understand that I'm trying to do accessible, affordable art for people. They think that is the extent of my limitation. People are stupid. So I've started doing more elaborate watercolors, including sort of gestural studies and warm-ups, not only to prove to myself that I am more than just a commission artist, but also to show those people who think they know me that they don't actually know me. If you get a lot of shade for your style of drawing, for the art that you do, the best thing that you can do is to do something just completely out of your wheelhouse. And that tends to be the only way to quiet people like that. In fact, I have some realistic examples here in the back of the book for all those people who said I couldn't do realism. And um, I plan on joining the Tennessee Watercolorist Guild in the near future. I do need to whip up some new watercolor studies. Um, and I'm not even going to show them any of my illustrative or comic art because they don't consider that fine art anyway, so I'll play by their rules. Okay, so it's, it was more something for you to grow as an artist as yes, opposed to producing watercolor Yes, but also to show art. people who um, were very quick to judge that maybe they should rethink that. And I believe that any artist who is dealing with that sort of pressure should give it a shot instead of going, oh, but my style, it's my style. It is your style. And you do have the right to do what you wish with your style. But if you want to change their mind, try something new. Show them that you're made of tougher stuff. Okay. Sorry. And uh, I feel really strongly about that. We're all familiar with your comic, Seven Inch Kara. That's but, um, right. You recently decided to launch it as a web comic a couple I did, months ago. I did. Yeah. Um, what led to that decision? Well, that is another another tricky thing. So, some friends of mine wanted to form a comic collective, and they invited me to join them. But I needed to have Kara as a web comic. And then one of those friends um, sort of went off into La La Land and decided to completely dissolve the collective without anybody else's consent. So myself and a few other hardworking comic people decided to rebuild and we will be relaunching as Ink Drop Cafe in April. Okay, and, I mean, but I the have... second volume of Seven Inch Care is not available yet, correct? Uh... The first oh. chapter of that second volume is available on Gumroad as a digital comic or free to my patrons on Patreon. Um, and I am working on chapter six and chapter seven. So this is art that I don't believe you YouTube uh, people have seen too, too much of. And I know you guys have asked me to do some tutorials and I have them recorded. I just need to get them edited. I would love to send you guys some tutorials on my beloved comic. Okay, so you've been working Would you on like it me diligently. To turn the pages for you? Uh, sure. Okay. Yes, I have been. Um, I do have to take breaks for conventions, 
And I did actually work on a black and white comic that I am pitching to a children's publisher. Um, and I'm hoping, hoping to hear some good news. So while I haven't been working steadily on Kara, I have been working steadily on comics. Okay. And you had mentioned that your mini and comics. Chapter six. This chapter six is beautiful. I'm so excited. I mean, look at that. It's gorgeous. Right. And that's the latest chapter that you've completed. That's right. Correct? That's the latest chapter, yes. So this is the most recent. And chapter six was done after many of those studies we just talked about. So as you can see, it really helped me level up as an artist. So me doing those studies not only quieted a few wagging tongues, but it also helped me grow. Okay. And you'd mentioned that your mini comics weren't selling well at uh, this convention. Has not that been this your, weekend, no. Has that been your experience in the past? No, not at all. MTAC is usually a great show for comics and mini comics. Um, I have a core group of fans who usually will come for that. I haven't seen their faces. I may see them tomorrow. They tend to be Sunday folk anyway. So um, I'm going to clear all this cutesy stuff off and I'll have my mini comics up again on Sunday. Okay, and that's just a decision that you made uh, looking at your sales book and decided to switch things up? Well, it's important to be flexible and to provide what the audience is interested in. But, you know, I am very passionate about comics and I'm very passionate about comic representation in the Artist Alley. And there aren't too many of us who are doing original content in the Artist Alley. So it is important to me to try and make that a priority. So even if the comics don't sell, they will be on the table tomorrow. Okay, and I know you've been changing some of the prices for your products That's right, recently. I've been trying to increase my prices to keep up with inflation and to keep my kitty cat fed. Okay. Um, he eats a lot, he likes expensive food, you guys have met him. Is, is that something that you've done in order to value yourself as an artist more? Or do you think that your skills have gotten better so it warrants a higher price? Um, or is it uh, just that you are hoping to make slightly fewer sales and produce less things, but uh, make a higher margin on those items. It could be all of those things, right? Um, I am well aware that my prices were lower than market value, and part of that is living in the South. People's standard of living is a little bit lower. I get a lot of people from the New York area and the California area criticizing my prices um, without ever having been to New Orleans or to Nashville, so they don't actually know what people make or uh, what their living yeah, looks standard like. Standard of living is right. Lower. It's lower down here. And, you know, I benefit from that in that my rent is lower, my food costs are lower. So I do try to keep my prices reasonable rather than, you know, being entire country competitive. I try to be competitive in my local market. But I have improved as an artist. I've grown a lot as an artist and I spend more time on every piece individually. So it was time to fairly reward myself or more fairly reward myself. And I'm trying to do it gradually because I don't want to price myself out of my customers a budget. I would like them to still be able to own original art. Sure. So you can essentially shift the items that your customers are buying by right. increasing some items right, more. Right, 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 right. Others. You could almost think of it as a penalty tax or an excise tax. If there are items that are tiresome for you to produce or you're tired of producing them, you can hike the price way up and I promise they probably won't sell. Um, or if there are items that you truly love, like where is she? Oh, up here. I just completed this Bunka doll inspired bunny. And she's tiny, but I priced her at 65. And I know some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, 65, that's too cheap. And then some of you guys are like, 65, Becca must have lost her mind. I can't afford that. But she's so cute and so dear. I want her to go to a good home. So I feel like I priced her more fairly in terms of my ability and some of the techniques that were demonstrated on that piece. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, I do know that you have some custom signage for some of your products. I do have custom, um, and I would love to have custom signage for all of my products. It's just a slow process, and these are all cute chibi illustrations of Kara from my comic, 7-inch Kara. And I have this sort of signage so that hopefully when people are like, oh, that character's so cute, I can say, oh, please check out the book. Sure. And I was going to ask, has that affected... Uh, <laughs> your ability to change the prices? Yes, or? it's made it. Okay, so I used to use post-it notes, which look super tacky, to be honest. Um, they're not cute at all. Now I have custom post-it note sort of things, which are much classier. Right, but and you just print at home? That's right. And then I hand write in the price, and if I need to change it, I can do that. But um, what I would like to do at some point is get some acrylic standees made that I have a whiteboard section where I can just write, write the price in. But uh, then I would be writing the price in at every con. Right. And that way, if you work a con on the West Coast, you could potentially charge more. I could charge, charge what their market is charging, yes. 
Okay. And would you have any advice to someone who's considering tabling at MTAC for the first time? MTAC is incredibly competitive to get into. It has, is both juried and lotto. So the way that works is they use the jury to help select sort of the better artists from the pot. And then they use the lotto system to determine how those artists get placed in the alley. If you're interested in getting into the MTech Artist Alley, I cannot highly recommend enough that you watch Joseph's interview with Heather from last year. Heather is the AA director and she's a wonderful person and she was super generous in allowing us to interview her. And that video has not gotten nearly enough views, especially considering how many of you shoot us repetitive questions on how to be a con artist. So if you're interested, please do watch that video with Heather and thank her for her dedication and her time. Okay, yeah, she is a volunteer just like That's everyone right. she's at not, Even though she's the AA head, she is not paid for her time. And also, it's important to note, a lot of people seem to think that artists are paid to... No, we attend. pay to be here. Yeah. We provide our own lunch if we get lunch. Um, but I think anyone who's watching these videos probably yeah, knows Yeah, they that. probably know better, right? I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, so, obviously, we can find your work on this YouTube channel. That's right. But where else can we find your work online? I would love it if you guys would go and read my comic, 7 Inch Kara, at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. Um, you can also check out my work on Instagram. Um, my username is natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, but you guys should know that as well. Um, and come hang out with me on Twitter. I am generally a super nice person, very bubbly. Um, and I love talking to people, especially people who enjoy my work. Those are my favorite people. So I don't ever want you to feel afraid or nervous about approaching me because I am actually very nice. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for letting me interview you, Becca. Oh, thank you so I, much for interviewing me. It was a pleasure. I hope you have a good impact. And I'll make sure to promote this video, as <laughs> should you. Bye, guys. Bye.